Well, I guess that I should explain uh, what we're doing today. Well, since we caught that, or actually Fred caught that kingfish, and I've been wanting to do this, I just hadn't had a chance to catch kingfish. Uh, but I'm, anyways, I'm gonna be doing a uh, smoked kingfish dip, which is very popular down here in the Keys. Um, I have a history of a lot of smoking fish. Uh, back in California, I did a lot of salmon. I would catch probably 30 to 40 salmon a season, and uh, most of those I would end up smoking and then giving away. And was able to do a different, lot of different variations. With a smoked fish dip though, it's not so much you're just eating just the kingfish on its own, although you can. But since I'm gonna be adding it with a lot of wet ingredients, I'm gonna just try to make the kingfish just pretty basic. Just do, I'm actually gonna do a dry brine, and then once that's done, smoke it, and then mix it with all the other ingredients. Dry brine is just using dry ingredients. Basically, a salt, which is gonna pull out the liquids, and then uh, some sort of flavoring uh, additive. I'm gonna be using brown sugar and white sugar. And I'm gonna use uh, basically a one-to-one, -one, so one part salt to one part sugar. And you just vary it to the size of the amount of fish that you have. I'm gonna make up the dry brine now and then uh, get the fish going on it. And it usually takes about four to six hours, probably at a minimum that you wanna do, or you could just easily just do it overnight. So the dry brine, like I said, is gonna be very basic. I'm gonna use just regular kosher salt. Okay, I've got my one cup of kosher salt. That'll go in there. Next, I'm just gonna do a mixture. You can just use all brown sugar or white sugar, it doesn't really make a difference. You're just giving it a little bit of a sweet sweetness to it. 
And then the uh, using like the dark brown sugars or the light brown sugars just gives a little bit of like a molasses tang to it. So I'm just going to I'm just going to mix it up a bit. Whoa. There. Whoa. And then we got about an equal cup of uh, brown and white sugar there. And that's basically it. Um, we'll go the next step I'll show you is that we're just going to encase the uh, fillets with the brown sugar salt mix and just let them sit for six hours. Okay, we've got our dry mix all blended up and ready to go. So we're going to just liberally sprinkle it on there. It'll find itself uh, everywhere else. Then what I'll do is do the top portion as well. And then I'm just going to flick it over and do the rest of them the same way. And then fillet to fillet basically. And got these big boys. And you'll see uh, once I'm done with this and let it sit for a few hours, how much liquid is going to get pulled off of uh, out of these fillets. And that's the responsibility of the salt in this mixture. A little bit much, but that's okay. All right. So there we go. So our brine mixture is set with the fish. I'm going to just cover it up and keep it in a cool place. Um, you can mix it with your refrigerator. If it's cold enough outside or in room temperature, you can leave it out. Uh, I'm going to throw in mine in the refrigerator and then uh, we'll take a look at it in four to six hours. Alrighty, here is my smoking setup. Uh, the smoker that I use is a Brinkman Smoke and Grill. Just a real basic charcoal based uh, smoker. Uh, components that come with it, I got a charcoal pan, then there's the uh, drip pan. Inside the pans is my uh, chip smoke chip box. So that'll be where all the little uh, hardwood chips go in. And then I got a couple of uh, racks there. Had to search around today to try to find some charcoal, tough to find. And then um, I've got uh, cherry wood chips and mesquite chips. So a couple hours before I get this thing fired up, I'll get those soaking and ready for it. So anyways, that is my unit there. I'm doing some photos before the night time because I'm going to try to do it covertly and so the island doesn't panic when they see all the smoke. Anyways, that is the tools of the trade. Okay, it's been about six hours. So I pulled out the container with the flays in it. And as you can see that salt has pulled out quite a bit of fluid so it's done its job there so let's take a quick look on the inside all right there it is all ready to go so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to take these out uh, give them a quick washing to get rid of all the salt and sugary and all the fluids off of it then pat them dry and then i'm going to put them on a drying rack for about an hour or so, maybe longer, and uh, let them dry out, and then I'll let you take a look at them after that. This part of it is very important to do, so let's take a look. Alrighty, the fillets have been air drying for a little over an hour. Um, now what's happened is that it creates what's called a pellicle. It's kind of the proteins rise to the surface and then causes a kind of like a I don't know, it's not really a slime barrier, but it's kind of like a slime barrier, a little shiny part to the flesh there. And then what that allows it to do is for the smoke to attach to it, and that adds that smoky flavor. So really important to do. 
Plus, you don't want a kind of a wet filet to be on there, so you want it semi-dry. But anyways, it's ready to go, so we're going to get the, the uh, smoker fired up and get these guys on the grill. Okay, while the briquettes are getting ready, we can go ahead and get the chips ready. I've got my little smoker holder with a, basically a heavy metal box. And we've got our cherry chips. All right, we've got the fish on the top and just gotta let it cook and smoke. Okay, we've got it all set up. It's uh, smoking away there. I haven't put the smoke box in yet, but we'll be ready to do that next. Right now, I'm just gonna start maintaining it. Uh, I wanna make sure I stay on the lower end of the heat range. And I'm gonna do that by just putting a few briquettes in originally and then just slowly maintaining that a couple every so often so there's not a big pile of uh, hot coals there and we're just going to keep an eye on that um, in a little bit I'll put the smoke box in and then you'll be able to check that out and then we're looking at about three to four hours at that low load medium heat all right let's create some smoke <laughs> We're really smoking it up now. It's been a couple hours, so I'm going to take off the smaller pieces and so they don't get too dried out. And those are pretty much done. All right, I've pulled them all off. There we go. Look at that. That looks amazing. It tastes great. I couldn't wait, so I ate one of them already. But eating them hot is just as good. But uh, I need the rest of these to make the dip. So now I'm going to get to pulling them off the skin and shredding them up. Okay, so this is basically how I'm creating all this shredded uh, pieces here for the dip. Just taking a fork, have these nice flays there, took the skin off. So it's just basically the pellicle top and then the softer uh, fillet there. And I'm just going to use a fork and just scrape it off in just shreds basically. It comes off rather easily if you if you do it right and it's still moist. It just comes off in these loose pieces. All right, we've got our pile of shredded uh, smoked kingfish ready to go in the dip. The bowl over there is just kind of the uh, pellicle skin part of it and one fillet. It's almost too savory to just eat a lot of it like that, but it'll be perfect with some uh, eggs in the morning. It almost tastes like bacon, that smoke uh, sweet uh, uh, bacony flavor on it. So that'll go really well. But anyways, the uh, ingredients are really pretty basic and you can just make it however you want to do a dip. Um, got some sour cream, 
Uh, this is actually, I just picked up, instead of getting a whole bunch of loose vegetables and chopping them up, they had this little Creole mix that has uh, almost everything that I need in there. So we've got yellow onions, celery, green bell peppers, red bell peppers, green onions, parsley, garlic, all finely minced, so, and about the perfect amount, so I decided to buy that instead of getting little pieces of everything. Then we've got some whipped cream cheese right here. Then we've got some tapatio, some Everglades seasoning. Uh, you definitely don't need to add any more salt on there because there is enough tinge from the, the brine there. Um, it's not overpowering, but it's there, especially with that smoke flavor. Then I've got some finely minced garlic and then some lemon. And with that, we're pretty much ready to go. So I'm going to just got to do some elbow grease and meld it all together. Couple other ingredients I forgot to add. We're gonna do a little splash of mayonnaise in there, get a little bit of that flavor in there. And then uh, I'm gonna put a packet of uh, Lipton's onion soup mix into the sour cream and that'll just give that a another bit of the onion flavor, dip flavor as well. But again, you could go as basic as just putting some uh, lemon, a little bit of mayonnaise, salt and pepper and be done with it. This is just going a little bit over the top, but I've got the stuff, so might as well use it. All right, let's put this smoked kingfish dip together. Uh, I'm gonna blend some of this stuff first, especially this cream cheese. Get the whip so it, uh, it mixes easier. It's already been room, sitting at room temperature. So that is nice there. Then I'm going to add some sour cream to kind of thin it out just a little bit. And I'm gonna add just a hair of uh, mayonnaise, just for a little bit for the flavor there. So I'll add a little bit of oils. Okay. And then you could add or subtract just to uh, get the uh, consistency how you want it. Mix that up here. So if it's uh, not dippish enough, you could always add more mayonnaise or probably more sour cream would be the best and more neutral flavor. But to each his own. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the soup mix in. And we'll start mixing that up. Like I said, you really don't have the need to go too much in the spice side of it. Keep it a little bit towards the more basic flavors. Yeah, see, that's a, that's a little pretty good uh, texture for a dip. It's a little thick. It's going to get thicker with the, uh, as I put the fish in there. So I might do a little bit more sour cream. I'll get the rest of the little bit of heat to it. And I'm just going to put some minced garlic in there. Good. Just a little bit of Everglades. That hot sauce gives it a little bit of the orange tinge to it, which is nice. Yeah, that's very nice. I'm gonna go a little bit of sour cream to uh, loosen it up a little bit. 
like a little bit thinner. Yeah, that lightened it up quite a bit there. So that's good. All right, that is a good dip there. Now I'll start adding some of this smoke fish in there. This is also excellent with uh, mixed with scrambled eggs in the morning. I did that with salmon a lot as well. I might have more fish than I do need for this dip. We'll have to see. So here's a close up so you can take a look. Yeah, that's what we've got so far. Now we're gonna add a little bit of color. Okay, go with more meat here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and keep mixing and then we'll be right back with you with the final results. All right, we are all done there. So I've got uh, some pieces for some friends. A lot of work put into this, but it comes out so good. Finger looking good. Still got a few fillets left, but uh, that is what we're looking at. Okay. That wraps up my Key West style smoked kingfish dip. Uh, always add some good old wheat thins or you can go down and get some fancy stuff, but it all works. Mm. Just so freaking good. <laughs> so good. Uh, it's one of those amazing things that you have down here. But I'm going to pick away at some of this. I'm going to get this stuff in the refrigerator. Get ready to give some friends tomorrow. Uh, probably have some scrambled eggs and smoked kingfish. And then for lunch I'll have that one last filet. Maybe make a sandwich or something. And sm snack on smoked kingfish dip for the rest of the day. So anyways, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thank you.